Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my very biased collection as usual. And um, today I would like to tell you something about the theorem, which is really cool. So an idea which is really cool, which is called the Pade approximation, which apparently is not as popular as it deserves to be. Um, so I will tell you or recall a little bit about the Taylor approximation, which I think most people have seen. And Pade is just a better version of it. Um, not much more difficult, but somehow not as popular. I'm not quite sure why. It's not so much more difficult to compute. In the end, the computer will do those calculations anyway. Um, but some of the error, the approximation error is usually much lower. And even if you don't care about approximating functions or whatever, which I'm going to recall anyway, um, it's also very nice from the viewpoint of kind of algebra. So when you want to massage an equation, that you get the, the Pade approximation is usually very helpful. So you might have done that with a Taylor approximation. Um, so you sometimes, for example, can have a generating function for counting um, and Pade approximations can do the same, but somehow it's not as popular um, as it should be. And I'm not quite sure why. I think it's cool. So that's what this video is all about. But let me try to motivate a little bit. Um, so, Analysis is kind of the study of continuous change, which is essentially somehow very, very useful. And uh, it's also a very powerful tool, which was developed already by the Greeks in some sense, and, but of course later than Newton and Leibniz and various other people. Um, so really, really powerful. But analysis is also very difficult. So if you just think about trying to solve an integral or a differential equation, well, uh, it gets really, really, really difficult. And on the other hand, algebra is somehow less powerful. Actually, you restrict yourself and you do um, kind of, you have less sophisticated goals. You don't really want to describe life. Your, your model is a bit easier if you want. Uh, so both of them try to model life in some way, uh, but the algebra model is way easier, um, but it's also less powerful. So in some sense, those two always want to play along. So one of them is really, really strong, uh, but a bit difficult. And the other one is, Less, less strong, but also much easier. So you always kind of want to play um, the, against one another using one in the other, right? So you, you definitely use the ideas from analysis and algebra, and you definitely use uh, ideas from algebra and analysis. And I think they they're really have huge intersections and you essentially can't separate them. So kind of my an analogy here, just separating them was a bit weird anyway, but I hope you get the point. Um, in this video, I really would like to go this way. So I'm only focusing on making analysis a bit light, easier. And, um, but the main idea is that you should approximate nice enough functions, whatever nice enough means. Functions tend to be really crazy. I'm, I'm interested in smooth functions, nice enough functions, something like that. Let's not worry about that. Um, but of analysis, using like functions of algebra, and what are functions of algebra? Well, well, linear functions are functions of linear algebra, no surprise. Um, and they are certainly the easiest functions you can imagine, lines, right? Or planes or something like that. So a linear approximation would be really awesome. Um, so that's kind of the overall goal. Always try to use linear functions unless you're forced to use something else. And sometimes you're forced to use something else. The next easiest one, and clearly still a function of, um, or kind of a map, a function of uh, algebra would be a polynomial. So uh, a lot of algebra is actually studying polynomial equations. And yeah, clearly polynomials are really beautiful. Um, they are more complicated than linear functions, obviously, but they're also a bit, bit, bit better. And kind of the last type of function I would like to put here in, maybe this is a good color, in my algebra box are rational functions. So if you want, this is just like the number one, maybe, and now we have uh, n, if you want, and this is maybe q or something like that, the analogy here. Um, so rational function is kind of the last type of function that I would like to put here for this video into the box algebra. And I kind of want to approximate way more difficult functions using those. And in this video, I restrict to one point approximation. You could think of approximating a function that we try to draw one, here's a function, uh, using multiple points here, 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 or whatever. And then it's maybe better to approximate them using whatever, something like a piecewise linear function or something. 
But um, in this video, I will definitely just focus on kind of the Bailey case. I only want to approximate at one point. So I want to find a function which is somehow good enough in a neighborhood of this point, right? So I restrict kind of the setting um, here uh, a little bit. Okay. And well, we just do a step by step linear, polynomial, and rational. Well, linear approximation, all of you know linear approximation, maybe not under that name, but it's essentially just a tangent at that point. So you take the derivative, compute the tangent, and it's a linear approximation. The tangent, by definition, is a linear function. Here's a nice picture of a tangent, and it's pretty good in a slightly tiny neighborhood. So in a, in a tiny neighborhood, it's good, but in, in general, of course, uh, it's not as great at all as an approximation, but it's kind of a stuff. So the whole point of diff so the first differential is an approximation. It's a linear approximation to a nice enough function. So my black thing here in the background is a nice enough function. And I can approximate it at one point fairly well, as soon as I don't care about my, my neighborhood being too big using uh, a tangent. And that's really classical, of course. And the first idea, of course, the first idea people tried is just to take higher derivatives. So this is the first derivative maybe you should tell, just take higher derivatives and you get kind of more and more sophisticated function. And that's essentially the idea of the Taylor approximation. So here are higher and higher orders of Taylor approximating again the, the function in the background, the, uh, what is it, the red? It's certainly not red. The black function in the background, the red is the linear approximation, so the tangent. And as you can see, it does fairly well uh, along the along the point of approximation, which is our zero point here, but then gets pretty shitty. And if you take higher orders, so orange is the next one, then yellow, then green, then blue, then pink and purple. So take the higher 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 order derivatives, the higher higher order polynomial terms in this expression, and it somehow gets bigger, better, and better. And I call this a cutoff of the Taylor series. So if you if you imagine the Taylor series is kind of an infinite thing, and you cut it off at one point. And you get a polynomial uh, approximation. I have an explicit example a little bit later. And you get an um, approximation of uh, the function around a point. And that one is pretty good. I mean, you use it all the time. You also use it in algebra sometimes. It gives you nice equations that you can massage a bit. If you think about the Taylor series, not really as a function, but more as a formal series. Um, and it is pretty good. It's really pretty good and kind of well known. And at some, for some reasons, usually people stop here and don't do the next step. But why not use rational functions? So these are polynomials, and they approximate the function reasonably well, but you need to go to quite high orders of polynomials, as you can somehow see in the background, to get a larger and larger um, kind of circles around the point of approximation where the approximation is really good. So rational functions should do better, because these are special cases of rational functions. So, and they're not much more complicated than polynomials. So why not go the next step? And this is exactly what the Padé approximation does. It's just Taylor with rational functions. And it's fabulous. It does a really, really fantastic job. I show you um, kind of a comparison of Taylor and uh, Padé in a second. But this is the idea. So now you approximate the approximation terms are rational functions of this form, right? So you want to approximate my little function here using rational functions, and it does quite well. I'll show you some better pictures in, in a second. But in some sense, this is really the best approximation you can think of using uh, points of algebra, and you can compute it very similar. I'm not going to explain it. It's, it's a bit too combinatorial, but you can compute it combinatorially very similar to uh, the Taylor series itself. And it's really fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. It gives you nice formulas. Um, approximating real-world functions using rational functions, and those approximations are usually terrifically good, like really, really good. And it's it's kind of surprising that people don't do it uh, more often. Certainly in certain forms of numerical analysis this is well known, but somehow it hasn't reached too much into other fields of mathematics for no good reason, I think, because it's kind of a beefed up version of the Taylor theorem, and Taylor is like, like everywhere, and it's, it's not much more difficult. And but anyway, so here it is. It's Taylor with rational functions, and it's terrifically good. And you can even make sense of what best uh, means. 
So here you have note that you have and the order of the denominator and of the, the one at the bottom, so M and N, and you can really approximate your function quite well going down to the whatever, M plus M's derivative, and my point of approximation here is say a zero, but it can, of course, vary that point. And it does a terrifically good job. So he has a fabulous approximation of X of X using a rational function. And if you plot that, it's really, really fabulously good. Okay, so uh, the very funny formula, two plus X divided by two minus X, and it's it's, ter it's a terrifically good approximation of uh, the exponential function. Um, in contrast, the second order, so this is first order. So it's just really just the first order per day approximation, and it's already fabulous. Um, this contrast on the other side, the second order Taylor approximation. So one plus X plus, and it does, this is also not so bad, but as you can see here, um, it will do uh, a little bit worse than the Padet approximation. And note again that Taylor here is of degree two and Padet is of degree one. So Padet usually is much, much better. And again, and I really like this expression here. So the exponential function is a rational function, and it's a really good one. Um, anyway, so Padet is, is really a beef up version of Taylor. And for a lot of functions, it's just really much, much better. And then there are some other nice facts. So it sometimes uh, it, it works even if, if Taylor doesn't convert or something like that. But rather, it's just this idea of using rational functions instead of polynomials, which kind of increases your approximation ability uh, quite a bit. It gets quite a bit better, not a bit better. It's quite quite uh, quite a lot better, and it's not much more difficult. So I really want to promote it here. Um, so maybe you want to try that. And also, again, in algebra, you very often write down equations using just abstract symbols, or abstract formal symbols. Um, and Taylor turns up very often, but not many people use Padé, but Padé is actually much better. So I kind of want to promote that even if you're interested in algebra or analysis, Padé is just uh, absolutely fabulous. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.